Luke 2 and 46. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him was astonished at his understanding and answers. And when his parents, when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he, Jesus, said unto them, How is it that you sought me? Wish you not that I must be about my father's business. Luke 4, 18. As is custom, 16. He came to Nazareth when he had been brought up, and his custom was he went into the synagogue of the Sabbath day and he stood up to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened upon him. And he began to say unto them, This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And one more. St. Luke 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and save that which is lost. Right. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. that's why he came. That's that's why why he came. came. To seek and save, seek and save. The, lost. the lost. You may be seated. Here we in, in the scriptures. We fail to really understand the true purpose of Jesus. You see, when Adam and Eve fell into sin, God already had a plan. Salvation was not a haphazard, thrown together, oh my, what am I going to do type thing. There are no uh oh moments in God. Amen. But God had a plan. And the Bible says that when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth a son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that was under the law. I believe God is a spirit. And God went into his closet and took on humanity. He put on a robe of flesh called son. And that son was born, came down to 42 generations and was born of a virgin. But as the Bible says that when they went to go pay their taxes, they took Jesus with them. And on leaving, they left him in the crowd with family members. And after they'd gone two or three days journey, they began to look for him, but could not find him. Have you ever lost a child? Hey Amen, y'all don't want to tell the truth. You in the shopping mall, you look in front of you where they done ran off to, it's a feeling you don't want to really feel. Especially if you done heard people kidnapping and stuff like that. Oh man, just know. Or you, or you leave the kids home to go shopping and you come home calling. When my two girls were age three, four, two, I was on a job that you had to be at when they called you. And so I was home and they called me to come to work and I could not get a babysitter. So I, they were asleep already and I, I just had to go in for a few hours. And so I locked the door, made sure they were secure and left. Two or three hours later I came home and all my lights were on in the house. My front door was open. 
I ran in the house. My kids had underwear and coats on. <laughs> they said, Daddy, where you been? We've been outside looking for you. Oh. Man, I grabbed my heart. They called the ambulance because I was stressing out and didn't know what to do. My heart was racing. The guy said I was under stress. I said, oh, yeah, I was under stress. A single dad trying to raise two girls. It was like crazy, you know? And, but it scared me to death. I can imagine how Mary felt. And then they decided that they needed to go back to look for him. And the Bible says after a day looking for him, they found him at church. They found a 12 year old at church, sitting among the doctors of the law, asking questions and answering questions. And the answers and things that he was saying were so profound. And his mother said, son, why have you caused us all this sorrow when we've been looking for you? And Jesus looked at her and said, how is it that you sought me? Don't you know I must be about my father's business? Well, wow, wow. At the age of 12, Jesus knew that there was a job that his father has sent him to do. And he knew that I'm not talking about being a carpenter with Joseph. I'm not talking about working in the wood shop. But I'm talking about my heavenly father. Man, man. Well, what could Jesus be doing at the age of 12 that would be concerning his father's business? To understand why he was in the temple at 12, you have to understand the father's business. Now, my father had many tools in the garage. And you can find me every now and then in the garage messing with my daddy's tools. My dad built the back porch for us at our house. Like my wife, my mama didn't like it. But my daddy knew it. My daddy had tools that I would go play with and do my thing and my daddy would say it to me and put those tools back where you got them. Because I had this thing about leaving them where I left them. <laughs> but y'all ain't been there, right? So, in order to understand why Jesus was at church, you had to know the Father's business. Yeah. The Father's business was knowing that Adam and Eve and humanity had fallen. And the plan of God and the business of God was to reconcile lost humanity back into himself. And when he put on that robe of flesh, all son. That son knew when he was in the temple that I've got to be about my father's business. I can see Jesus at the age of 12 when he got left behind. He walked straight to the church. Knew where he was going. Amen. Knew the purpose. At your age today, do you know what you're supposed to be doing for God? At the age that you are now, do you even know where you're headed with your spiritual life? At the age that you find yourself, are you leaving everybody else behind so you can be busy about your father's business? So Jesus, I can see, enter into the temple. And the doctor saying, can I can see who was ever in charge saying, may I help you? And Jesus said, no, I'm just coming home. Ah, oh, I'm just coming home. What do you mean you're coming home? Well, if you turn to the book of Malachi, the Bible says that the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Hey, the God of the Bible that you've been looking for. It's going to show up one day wow, wow. 
own at his own house. And there it was at the age of 12. Amen, amen. amen. I don't know if you've seen the movie called The Avatar about this young boy who is supposed to be able to bring the world total peace. But when he was there, he was in the form of a boy because that's the age he had come in and people didn't understand it. And he knew that he had a mission to do. He knew that his mission was to bring the fire people, the water benders, and the people that control the wind. He was supposed to bring them together because they were at odds with one another. They were fighting one another. They were trying to control one another. And he knew that his purpose here on earth was to bring unity and peace and harmony and love. But the problem was he was a little more than 12 years old. But at the age of 12, he knew his position. He knew his place. And he understood his power. All right, all right. We need to know our position in God. We need to know our place in God. And we need to know the power that is available to us. Yes, yes. To do the Father's business. Yes. Everything that you have. Everything that you possess yes, yes. belongs to the Father. Yes, yes, yes. But the Father has allowed you to have it for his purpose, for his plan. Everything that you got, God has given to you to use yes, yes, yes. for his glory. Yeah. If you got money in your pocket, it's not just to buy a new car. But it's to do something for the work of God. Yeah. If you got a gift to sing, it's not to go to the rock and roll concert and raise millions of dollars. It is to lift the name of Jesus. Yeah. If you got the ability to talk well and draw people, don't draw them to make money. Draw them to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Here and now, he said, Mother. Don't you know I got to be about my father's business? You see, mom's sin is in the world. And sin's got to be defeated in order that I can bring peace between man and God. Because right now, my father's upset, y'all. <laughs> because the wages of sin is death. Yes, yeah. And my father has got his hand up and is going to strike lost humanity. Right. If you don't believe it, you better ask no. Because yeah. he wiped out the entire world because of sin. Yeah. If you don't believe it, you better go talk to them at Sodom and Gomorrah. Because well, right. he wiped them out because of sin. Sin separates man from God. Yes, yes. Sin is a stink in God's nostril. Yes, yes. So why am I in the temple, Mom? <laughs> I'm offering up sacrifices to my Father. Wow, wow. Oh, that's why the Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. I got to go, Mama, because I got to be about my father's business. Yes, yes. But he became subjective to his mama. But when he hit the age of 30, it was the age that he could enter into the priesthood because you couldn't get there until you was 30. That's why you don't hear a lot about his childhood because he was there doing and being obedient to Joseph. But at the age of 30, it was when he could do legally what God needed him to do. Yes, yes. And that's why when he came on the scene, hmm. he went into the church as the Bible says, as was what he did. Jesus was a church going man. Wow, wow. Oh, but when he went in the church on this day, they brought to him a book 
And the book was of the prophet Isaiah. And when he took the book, he sat down and he opened the book. And he turned to the book of Isaiah, which we read in the book of Luke. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach captive, recover the sight to the blind, to set a liberty down down the bruise, to preach the acceptable year of our Lord. Then he sat down and said, this day, not next week, this day, is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing? I am he that's come to set the captive free. I am he to open the eyes of the blind. I am he to heal the brokenhearted. Why? Because I'm about my father's business. You see, my father wants to mend broken hearts and broken lives. My father wants to bring together lost humanity. My father, I got to be about my father's business, so that's why I got to go. That's why I must work while it is day for the night coming when no man can work. Wow, wow. I'm about my father's business. Wait a minute, Jesus. Why are we walking to this town? I'm about my father's business. I got folks that are hurting, folks that are sick, Folks that are afflicted, and don't you know, look at God looking down on humanity, crying in one room. A woman lost a child. All starvation in another house. Bills are due, rent, foreclosure, know this and know that. And God was feeling the pain of lost humanity. Here comes the cripple, here comes the sick, and afflicted, bent over by diseases, bent over by sin, bent over hurting, blinded eyes, people that couldn't see, people that couldn't walk right, people with clefts in the mouths, cleft lips, people who were deteriorated, people who were broken, people who were bruised. That's why when they came to him, the Bible said, and he had compassion on them because he was being about the father business. He had mercy on them. That's why when the blind man was sitting on the side of the road and they cried out, Jesus, that son of David, have mercy on me. That's why his heart went out. That's why when the, the little crippled woman came to him with the issue of blood, bent over, broke, busted, and disgusted, after all the years of giving everything she had to the doctor, she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. If I can just touch, ha! Oh, do you need a touch this morning? Ha! Do you need a touch for your problem? Do you need a touch for your situation? There is a God that's going about doing the Father's business. His name is Jesus. That's why when she went up and touched the hem of his garment, after a crowd of was around him, he stopped and said, huh, who touched you? I could see the disciple, what you man, what's the matter with you? All these people are around you. What you mean, who touched you? No, that wasn't an ordinary touch. Uh, there's this touch, hey baby. And then this, hey baby. <laughs> A touch of love. Somebody touched him with love, a knee. And he said, I felt the power go out of my body. Who touched me? Mm. Mm. Oh, I got to be about my father's business. The Bible said he was healing. He was raising up the sick, healing the sick, raising up the dead. But when he got on the cross, he was mocked, they said to him, he saved others. But he won't even save himself. Lord help. Because he was about the father's business. Oh, y'all don't understand. In 1982, in Washington, D.C., at the Potomac River, the Air Florida plane was about to take off. 
but wings have ice had gotten on the wings. And when that plane took off, she crashed and went into the water. But there was somebody on top of the bridge that jumped into the icy, cold water to rescue them that were drowning. I'm so glad ha, Jesus came to my rescue. All right, all right. When I was drowning in sin and shame, my God came and jumped in for me. He was better than Baywatch. Ha, uh, he was better than, well, also High or whatever his name, Michael. Ha, oh, he came seeking for me. That's why God is visiting your house. That's why God is knocking at your door. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. That's why he's been in your jail cell. That's why he's been looking for you. He came seeking for me. When I didn't come after him, he came for me. That's why my God came. He came to reconcile lost humanity. He came to heal the brokenhearted. He came. That's why he came, child. That's why he came. He came because Humpty got broken. Ah. And all the king horses and all the king men couldn't put Humpty together again. Ah, uh, but we took Humpty to Dr. Jesus. Well, wow. Uh, because Dr. Jesus fixed the broken pieces of your amen. life. Ah! Uh, oh, we got a doctor, Dr. Grace, <laughs> and Dr. Mercy, and Dr. Love. <laughs> oh, they can fix anything. Oh, we need Jesus because he came to seek and save the lost. Oh, right now, where you're at, he came. Where you're going through, he's here. Whatever you need, God's got it. That's why he came. Oh, I'm so glad Jesus loved me. I'm so glad he cares. I'm so glad. I don't know why. I don't know why. But oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that he does. That he loves me not as I am just as I am. Uh, he loved me just as I am, knowing what I could be Amen. with Jesus in my life. That's why he came. Oh, church, we have so many folks that have been rejected because of the color of the skin. We got folks that are rejected because of the Democratic Party they're in. We get folks that get rejected because of the place that we're born. They get rejected because you come from the wrong side of the tracks. You get rejected because your hair is... Y'all remember that song he said about, he talked about the long hair hippies and the guy put his hair under his hat and he went into the store and the guy said, I'm gonna hire you and he put up his head and he said, imagine that. <laughs> uh, oh, but Jesus loves you with your long hair, back broke, disgusted. Jesus loves you just as you are. If Jesus had a shop, it would be over 24 hours a day. Say, come in, heal for the broken heart and help for those that are here. If you need love, peace, joy, happiness, come on in. The shop is open. The doctor is in. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, the doctor is in, y'all. That's why he came. Oh, he came to seek and save the lost. Let us stand. Maybe it's this morning. You feel your heart is broken. And maybe this morning you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. And maybe this morning you feel like I can't handle anymore. Or maybe this morning you feel like nobody understands what I'm going through. And maybe this morning you feel like I just can't carry this anymore. I'm saying to you, you don't have to. Dr. Jesus is in. And he's seeing patients right now today. He doesn't take HMOs. He doesn't need your blue cross or blue shield. He doesn't need your all state, interstate, or any other thing that you might have. He doesn't need anything that you got because you can't pay the bill. 
Oh, he's paying a debt he didn't know. Because you and I owed a debt we could not pay. Amen. That's why he has come. You'll never be saved going to a church. Brother Bernard, folks don't get saved going to church. They get saved when the God of the church comes into them. Amen, amen. Once you open up your heart, that's why he's king. He's come that you might have life yes. and that more abundantly. He's come to seek and to save that which is lost. 